Hello Blenderheads! My name is Jamie Number from Dragon Boot Studios and I'd like to welcome you to this Blender 2.8 character design for production tutorial. Now the reason I've made this tutorial is with the release of Blender 2.8 there's not a lot of character design tutorials out there. In fact even if you go back to Blender 2.7 there was only a handful that um, really walked you through the whole process from modeling a character all the way through to uh, doing a test animation which is what this tutorial is going to be. Throughout this series of tutorials, we're going to cover modeling. Um, so we're going to do some sculpting and some box modeling, where since we're doing sculpting, we're going to do a little bit of retopology. We'll then move on to UV unwrapping, texture painting. Uh, we'll be creating a rig for our character using Rigify. But in our instance, as you can see, we've got uh, this character over here we'll be creating, more about her in a moment. But the uh, standard Rigify there's going to be missing a few features like uh, tails and big floppy ears and stuff. So we'll be using Rigify as a base, but then we'll be building on top of that, including just a little bit of very simple coding. Uh, don't get too scared about that. It's mostly going to be copy and paste. And then finally, we'll be testing out our rig with a very simple animation just to make sure that everything deforms correctly. So just a heads up, these tutorials are aimed at intermediate users. We're not going to be going over things like navigating through the interface or keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I'm going to be assuming a certain level of experience from all of you because, well, to be perfectly honest, creating characters is a little tricky and it's definitely time consuming. Uh, so you're going to want to have some of those basics down first. So being aimed at uh, intermediate users, perhaps you're somebody who's coming from uh, Maya or 3ds Max and you've heard about this whole Blender gig with the release of Blender 2.8 and you've thought, Oh, maybe I'll go check out some of that free software and, and see whether it's any good. And uh, having been, well, I used Maya for about seven or eight years, and for the last three years I've been using Blender, and uh, Blender's pretty good, which if you don't already know, you're going to learn. Maybe you're coming from a different program, maybe you're looking to create your own short animations and you'd like a crash course on putting together some characters for that. Maybe you're a freelancer and you have uh, clients that you want to work with who are needing characters. The point is, this is going to be aimed at people who are looking to create characters specifically for production. So what that means is the characters that we're going to create, we're going to, I'm going to be teaching you ways to create them in the fastest way possible. As we go along, we're going to be creating them in ways that allow for flexibility as we go. If you've worked in production, you'll know that it doesn't matter whether it's your boss or your clients or even just your colleagues and teammates, you constantly need to get feedback on your work uh, and you need to be making changes all throughout the pipeline. So we'll be going over a few different ways of making the character creation process as flexible as possible. That's going to include rigging, so we're going to be using the um, linking options that Blender provides. Uh, more on that when we get to the, the rigging stage. So because this is a character that we're creating for production, uh, we're going to be working off some character sketches. And as you can see here, we've got a a rather specific monkey character which uh, you might vaguely recognize as a fleshed out version of the Suzanne model. I must confess I'm not a particularly good 2D artist myself, my skills are very much revolved around the 3D realm, uh, so I got somebody to sketch this for me. Uh, their name is Volfa. you can find them on Fiverr if you're at all interested in uh, recruiting their skills, but they did this little sketch for me and coloured that in, uh, and we've also got a couple of uh, front and side views that we're going, to be, uh, we're going to be using to help model our character. Probably worth mentioning that this character, this fleshed out character here, is based on, or loosely based on, uh, the work by Julian Casper. Uh, if you haven't seen Julian's work, you should definitely check out uh, his ArtStation account. He's an incredible 3D sculptor, predominantly uses Blender, uh, might exclusively use Blender. I'll make sure that there are links in the description below. One last thing that's worth mentioning before we dive in is if you haven't already started using it, you should go and pick up a copy of a program called PureRef. Uh, this is a program that's that we use to collect reference images in. And if you have a look at this layout here, you can see that we've got our original sketch over here. We've got Julian's sketch that we can uh, use as reference. We've got our front, side, and back reference. And then I've also just gone and got a couple of different images 
off uh, just off Google Images, just for things that I expect might cause us some some grief a little bit later. So, you know, a close up of a, an actual real live monkey's head that we can use as reference, and then just things like fingers and hands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so, if you're not using Pure Ref, it is hands down the best program I've used for collecting your references. Please use references. References are uh, godsends. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're working at Pixar or DreamWorks or Industrial Light and Magic. I, I guarantee you they're using reference. You should use reference too. So again, I'll make sure that there's a link in the description there. All right, so let's uh, let's set up our, uh, our image planes. So I'm just going to get rid of this now and make this full screen. And in fact, let's let's just delete that for now. Let's let's get our uh, our images set up. So if you go to File Import Images as Planes, this will open up. Uh, well, I've got it set to a reference folder. In fact, this is something that's worth mentioning for production, and we might go into this in a little bit more detail. I've got a a base folder which I've called Blender Tutorials, and within that I've got the recordings. This is where this recording is being saved. I've got all of my reference material. And I've got the scenes, which we currently don't have anything saved in there. This is where our Blender scenes will go. And in fact, I'm even just going to make one right now and call it Textures, because we will definitely be uh, texturing this later on. So if I just go back into References, we're importing images as planes here, and I'm just going to go and select both of these and go Import Images as Planes. Now we bring those in, and the first thing that you'll notice is that they're blank. This is not particularly helpful. Now, if you go into look dev mode, you can all of a sudden see, oh, good, yes, uh, it does have the textures uh, imported onto them as, as materials. But because we're going to be sculpting a lot here, um, we're going to be staying in the solid view quite a bit so that we can use the, uh, the matte caps over here. And these just aren't going to show up. So this is a little bit of a limitation of the, uh, of the import as images as planes menu. So I'm actually going to delete both of those. I'm going to bring up that reference folder in Windows, and I'm just going to click and drag on the front view, and it's it's going to crash on me um, because that's not particularly helpful. That don't ask, don't tell. Uh, for some reason, doing it twice makes it work. Okay, so there's our front image, and and as you can see, it's when you drag them in. In fact, let's just let's just move over here a little bit, and I can show you this properly. I'm going to drag in the side image now. If I just drag it in, you can see it comes in facing the camera. This could be particularly useful if you were looking to do like some motion capture or something. In our instance, that's not going to work for us. So I'm just going to select both of these images. I'm going to go Alt and R to rotate, or reset the rotations, and then G to set them both back to the, uh, to the major pivot point here, the center of the world. Then I'm going to select them, or select one of them, Bring up the rotation and just. Oh, I've accidentally selected scale there. Hang on, let's try that again. Make sure that I've got the x-axis there. Start rotating it, and then I'm going to type 90, which then snaps it to 90 degrees. And then I will do the same over here. Bring him up 90, and then on the z-axis, do 90 again. Uh, now, as you can see, these are kind of penetrating each other here. That's that's. Not a great way to work, like if I just go and add a UV sphere here, you can see that's going to be possible to sculpt. So again, I'm just going to grab these, go over here and grab my move tool, and just move that one backwards a little bit, and move that one off to the side. Now just for scene organization, over here, uh, I'm going to go and create a new collection, and I'm going to name this folder References and then I'm going to grab both of those and drag them in there. This is just really good for scene organization. You have to remember that when you're working in production, you might not be the only person who works on this scene. So you might just be a modeler, you might go ahead and model this character, uh, but then you might handball it off to somebody else in the production pipeline to do the rigging. So you wanna make sure that everything is named correctly. So just to be pedantic, I'm going to go and rename this front and rename that one side. And that's it. That's our first lesson covered. In the next lesson, we're going to start blocking out Suzanne's head. See you then.